All right, family. Good afternoon. I think I'm making it just before it's uh, evening. Happy New Year to you all. It is January, I think the 4th, 2019. And to God be all the glory, we made it. Amen, we made it. And since we've made it, we want to come into this year making decisions and doing things that, you know, most people would call insane. If you keep on doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome, we want to do some things different this year. And as you know, my messages to you typically are based upon what I have preached on Saturday or Sunday, the time frame before. And so this is my what my New Year's message was. And to get going in this new year and have a, a do-over and look to get things right with the Lord and relationships and ministry and book writing and whatever it may be that God has called you to do, there's no better time than the present to let go to have it all. And so for those that have heard this message or heard it on Sunday, letting go to have it all is what I am helping and, and desiring to have Run and Shout Evangelical Ministries operate upon as well as our Restoration Center Overcomers in this year of 2019. This is a time of letting go, a time of looking to have people understand that before you can go forward, you have to let go some things. And in letting go, it means whatever it is that's hindering you from moving forward, from doing the things that you need to do to stay focused on the things that God has called you to do, you got to let some stuff go. Some things are just meant to be temporary things. They're seasonal. There may be, you know, not too many things are going to be permanent outside of uh, living, death, and dying. And, uh, and where you're going to spend eternity. And yeah, you need to work because a man that don't work don't eat, according to the word of God. And so even if you're putting things in place to be able to do those things, to do something different in this 2019, this is the time frame to do it. Because if you've been trying some stuff that has not done well for you in 2018 and you continue them on into 2019, they call that insanity. And let this be a year free of insanity. Amen. And so my scripture text for Sunday was, uh, in the New Year's, was Hebrews chapter 12, verses one through three. And it reads thusly, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. This is my perspective on what's being said here. First of all, Things that are tying you up, things that are keeping you from moving forward and doing the things that God has called you to do. It doesn't matter what it is. Some things you got to let it go. It can be, you know, you holding a grudge from 20, 30 years ago, or even if it's just a few hours ago. You cannot move forward holding on to that thing because, first of all, what happens is that you have cement that's blocking the communications line between you and the Father to get the directions that you need to have, to be able to function in the spirit to which you need to function in. So you have to let it go. The, the word says every snare, everything that entangles you, something that keeps you, prevents you from being everything that God would have you to be, let it go. Then the scripture further goes on to say that we are to be able to endure and run, but you can't run if you're holding on to stuff. Imagine yourself trying to run, but there's this weight from the past that's just holding 
holding you back, keeping you from doing what you need to do. Let it go already so you can have it all. And, and the other thing is that the scripture text is saying, God, this is my my spiritual imagination, my paraphrasing of the, the word that I just read to you. Jesus endured the cross. He was committed to the cross, not for himself, but for us. And if he could do that and not look down upon us and be so totally frustrated, but instead say from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Who are we? When the word of God says that even stuff that people repent from, he has already thrown it into the sea of forgiveness and we're holding on to it. Can't live life. They've moved on, gone on doing whatever it is God has called them to do. And we're holding on to things that we cannot change because if we could, we would be doing something different and better by now. So let it go. If you're looking to have it all in 2019, let it go to have it all. And when you have all, you get the great things that God has come to give us. You get it's saving, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, a gift that you cannot give to yourself. Only Jesus could pay that sin debt. You get deliverance. You get restoration. You get peace that surpasses all understanding. You get power and authority to walk over serpents. You get to speak to the mountain, say, mountain, be thy removed. You get to say to the illnesses that there is a bomb in Gilead. You get the promise, the promise keeper. You get provision. He's your sustainer, your counselor. You get the lawyer in the courtroom. You get the master physician. You get so much more, the full package, when you take time out to give yourself and those things containing to you or pertaining to you that are holding on to you. If you let them go, these are the things that you can have. And there is nothing no better than having the great things that God has desired for us to have in the precious name of Jesus. He wants us. Jesus gets great joy out of blessing us. I used to say all the time when I visit the nursing homes that, that, that Jesus is running around the throne. You know, he, he's like, Daddy, Daddy, you know, did you see what so-and-so did? They did this, they did that. And, and, and I can just imagine God saying, Son, yeah, just bless them. Just bless them. And bless them real good. Why? Not because you crossed every T and dotted out every I, but you've been intentional and faithful to at least try to do the right thing. First and foremost, for being a forgiven person as God has forgiven you and forgetting those things. If God has thrown, into, thrown them into the sea of forgiveness, why would you dare try to hold on to something that's going to keep you bound? It's not a good thing to do. So we want to understand what God's word is saying here to us. And in Ecclesiastes, it says, this is uh, chapter 3, verse six, 6. It says, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. Throw it away. Let it go. These things are not helping you. They're hindering you. And you're wondering why you're constantly frustrated and upset and can't move forward because you're holding on to stuff that... You got to let go. If God's word has declared that ven vengeance is his, what are you going to do with it? You know, I did this. The soul and should say, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Well, if the father has said that vengeance is his, then why are you trying to fight the battle? Let him do what he can do. And I'm telling you. Any and everything that you think you could possibly do to defend yourself against someone is nothing in comparison to what the Father can and will do. Just like the three Hebrew boys say, you know, even if he didn't do it, it's not that he can't do it because he has all power in his hand. So we have to trust God and let those things go that are preventing us from moving forward. Yeah, I 
absolutely cannot drive forward looking in the rear view mirror. It's going to be difficult to have your head turned backwards trying to go forward. I didn't understand this, this new thing they said everybody was doing something about a movie. I don't watch a lot of TV and stuff like that. But if you put a blindfold on in life and try to make it from one end to the other, you're going to have a, a not, not that you won't have issues in life, period. Things are going to come to happen that are going to help you towards your destiny to make you stronger. But if you are intentionally trying to get somewhere by putting a blindfold on your eyes, don't you know you're going to go through more hell than, than necessary trying to get where you're going simply because you have already impaired yourself? Well, the same thing when you're holding on to stuff that can't help you. Let it go. You mess up the communication between you and God holding on to stuff that he has told us to let it go. Get rid of it. There's a season for everything. And in here, in this Hebrew, in Ecclesiastes 6, it says, 3 and 6, it says, throw it away. Look, you can have fun with it. Treat it like a football or a baseball. Throw that thing away. Amen. So get rid of it so you can move on. And I had some points here. I'm, I'm not going to go through them all because it'll just be redundancy. And I, I, I just want to encourage you so that, you know, it's the new year. And so often we, we start those resolutions. And one of the things I shared with the ministry is that we don't need New Year's resolutions. What we need is new lifestyle changes. The only thing that's going to help you to move forward in life or to do better in life is to have a lifestyle style change. When you make a lifestyle change, you're doing some things intentionally to be better towards that which God has called you to do. A resolution, you're going to start out good, but I'm going to tell you, I lay beside some chocolates and I had just said, all right, I'm going to stop eating this stuff. It's time to give it up now. Got to get back into my good eating habits. And before an hour passed by, probably wasn't even 30 minutes later, I looked to the right. And there was another piece of chocolate. And what did I do? I grabbed it up and I took the paper off it and I stuck it right in my mouth. Because why? I had not done what I need to do to be intentional about the change that I would not change, but going back to how I typically eat. So what happens when we are looking to do something different? Anything that's going to prevent you from doing that. Even when it comes down to people, you got to get rid of them. You've heard now from me, this whole time frame that I've been coming before you, some things you got to treat just like T-Mobile said, scroll, select, and delete. I got to get rid of that candy. I got to do like Ecclesiastes 3 and 6 says, I got to throw it away. So if you know that there are things that are standing in your way, preventing you from moving forward and doing what you need to do, get rid of it. Be it it's people, be it it's relationships, be it is, I mean, it could be any number of things that's holding you back, even sometimes family. Now, and I'm not saying get rid of people, you know, to just like totally get rid of them because we need to love and be merciful towards one another. But everybody that's, you know, in your, in your, uh, in your realm, your circle, you don't have to allow them in to the place where they keep you in bondage or have you operating in a way where they can't support you in your endeavors. So, you know, some of them, you just have to treat with a long handle spoon and, and know how to, you know, say, okay, all right, uh, I'll talk to you later. All righty. All right. You be blessed and you keep it moving because the longer you hang around them, the more depressing you get. You know, I've been that way before. I've, I've, I've been around people and, you know, I, I love people and, you know, I'm always smiling. At least I'm hoping to smile and cheer a person up. But sometimes, you know, folks just dump so much on you and you be like, you know, wait a minute, I, I, this ain't working for me. I'm gonna have to, you know, I, you know what? I'll talk. I gotta go. And you're gonna say you gotta go to some things. Not that you don't like them or, or, you know, care about them, but you have to do what's going to be in your best interest with your relationship with God. So that means some things we have to get rid of. And so here are my points again, and I'm not going to go through them too much, but number one was 
If you are holding on to anything you should have let go, you can't receive what God wants you to have. That's like, like being in somebody's place wondering why you're not prospering because it's not your place to be in. You got to let that thing go. When you're holding on to things that you should have let go and God is trying to give you that blessing you've been believing and declaring and receiving and all kinds of stuff, but wondering how come it's not being manifested, it's because your hands are like this. You hold Holding on to stuff that you should have let go a long time ago. And until you let it go, nothing's going to come in. You got to open your hands to let it in. You have to open your heart to let it in. You have to open up your mind. Stop being so closed-minded thinking that all oh, things can only happen your way. No, get into a circle. We're going to have some experiences that's going to lead you down a path pathway that's going to bless you beyond what you could have ever imagined. Open your heart, mind, body, and soul to the things that God has for you. Loose those things that are keeping you bound in the name of Jesus. That's the only way you're going to be able to receive the rest of what he has for you in 2019 to move forward. The dream has not changed. The vision has not been dismissed. A, a delay is not a denial, but everything and everybody can't go where you're going. Let it go. Open your hands. Free yourself. Shake, 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 shake the devil off. It's got to go. Amen. Number two, why do you hold on to things? It can be uh, for various reasons, but if it's because you feel someone harmed you and you're going uh, to get them back, vengeance is the Lord. I said it earlier. There is nothing that we can do that God won't do. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And then I like Joseph's life. Joseph went through all that hell from his brothers and then uh, uh, Potiphar's wife. I mean, just you want you name it from the, the pit to the pulpit. I mean, to the palace. And then he was uh, in that place of um, the jail and then he came out and now he he's running the nation. And God said when he, he saw his brothers and he was able to look at them, he said, well, what? And I'm paraphrasing. What they intended for harm, God has turned into my good. So let those things go. You can't change the past. You can't change things that have taken place, but you can let them go. That's why the word of God says, renew your mind daily. When you begin to put the word of God in you, when you begin to soak on the things that are concerning the word of God, then it will push that stuff, that garbage that you've been holding on. It'll push it out. So let it go so you can receive the blessings of the Lord. Joseph didn't fret. Joseph was, was speaking, you know, like all of us when we immature, I'm talking to myself and I share with the ministry on, on Sunday that even with this message, as God has been working on, on this message for the last several months, he had to start first with me. Stop holding on to things. Let it go. Stop thinking that things can't be and, and doing what other people, because my, my issue is that I tend to always do what people think I should do and, and what I think they want me to do and I suffer from that and I said that I had gotten over but I found out that I really had not been delivered from that and so God had to first allow this message to work in my heart my mind my body and my soul before I could even bring it to you because how am I going to tell you something that I can't do so I had to let things go in terms of how I allow people to dictate my life. Man can't put me in heaven or hell. So at best, I can do what the word of God has told me to do. And God says, oh, he's a forgiving God. So how is it he's going to forgive somebody and, and allow them to move on and matriculate to the great places that he has for them to go? But then I'm afraid to be in the circles where people have gone through some things because I think they might hurt me. First of all, the word of God says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Now, don't get me wrong. You don't want to be stupid and put yourself in an unsafe place or find yourself in harm's way. No, you don't want to do that. But you don't want to spend your life looking over your shoulder when God got you. Give it over to the Lord. He's going to take care of it. And when you release that thing to him, then again, hands open, heart open, mind open. He can begin to fill you with all of the greater things that he has for you. But he can't do it until he say, I stand at the door and knock. 
It's up to us to let him in. So we have to open up, let him in. And, but we, because we're free will creatures, we have to let God know that we are welcoming him in so that he can make the changes and help us get through the things that we're trying to get through. So as this message began to work on me, then I was able to preach it with power and with knowing that, yes, hey, God has no respect to person. What he does for one, he'll do for another. So now I can do it and I don't have to be doing it from a, uh, what's that word? They, when they, they see you, you, you are, you're telling somebody to do something, but you're not doing it. I can't think of the word, but I know y'all know what that word is but you know you can't do that you can't do things you you expecting for somebody else to do something that you are the leader the pastor the bishop the elder the whatever you want to call it but you can't even walk into it don't you know when you're preaching the word the word is just as much for you as it is for them amen so i had to get to a place where yes I can even free my mind from worrying about doing things that people want me to do. And I'm missing out on God's best for me because I want to make people happy. Ain't, first of all, people don't even like me like that anymore. I, I, that, that was another thing. I really thought people liked me. Boy, was I fooled. But that's all good, too. You know, it's all good. But you learn to live and move on when you renew your mind with the word of God. Because as long as God loves you. No greater love. <laughs> no greater love. Okay, all right, y'all. Point three. His grace is sufficient. You won't die, but you will live. Let go that stuff is not going to kill you. I promise you. Because I survived. I survived. I survived. I have survived 20 years of people and things trying to destroy me. And all they've done was make me bigger, better, stronger, wiser. I love that song by Ty Tripper because I'm telling you, if the devil had only known what he was doing to try to kill me, that he was in, the, in, in, in a sense just making me stronger, better, and wiser. Because remember, the word of God says, I'll make your enemy your footstool. If you're rebuking them all away and, 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 and looking at your situation, poor old you, instead of realizing that this is your stepping stone, you focused on the wrong thing. That's why we have to be focused on the word of God. The word of God is the thing that's going to get us from point A to point B. So don't look at your circumstance and situation and think that it's all over. No, it's just beginning because God has great things for you and I. So don't give up because we have to understand that God's word is so. Any place that you think you're missing something, he's already established that his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. So if we just take the time out to let it go, to have it all, everything that we have been praying and asking God for that lines up with his word, he's going to give it to you. But he's not going to give you anything that you're not ready for. So coming into this 2019, if you are willing to let it go, to have it all, God has so much. No more delays on the things, the blessings that God has for you. Let it go. Hold, get, get those things up that have, have should have been let go decades ago. You know, I don't care if it was 30 seconds ago. Let it go already. Because God, your father, gets great joy out of blessing you. And anytime you're going through something and something doesn't, doesn't appear or feel as if it's going to work out for you good, God says that it will. And he says his, his grace is sufficient for anything that we might be lacking in. So we have to learn to trust him. We have to learn to renew our minds with his word so we don't get so caught up when we're going through life because life is going to happen. It's, it's just what it is. I have learned to say when things are going on, even I had a cold go coming into the Christmas time and I was like, man, but you know what? I was so grateful for that cold because it told me that I was alive. Because there are things happening in this world. It doesn't matter your age. There, there's no set time for death anymore. Death happens all around us. But how about this? You can be dead while being alive. If you're not operating according to God's word. If you're not operating according to the precepts and principles that are going to allow you and help you to be able to let those things go that you're not, not supposed to be holding on to so that you can live. 
who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. He said, I come that you not just have life, but you have it more abundantly. But if everything on you is just, you got this on you, you got this. I mean, you just got some of everything on you trying to hold on to stuff that's going to kill you. And he said, let it go. You cannot, you cannot get, you cannot receive like this. It won't happen. Nothing's going to get through here until I let it go. So until you let it go, it's not going to happen. So letting it go to have it all. And what is all? I've already read it to you. It's everything in the Bible. It's number one, your salvation when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Number two, you get deliverance. You get healing. You, you get anything you need as his child. He says the earth and the land and the fullness thereof, it all belongs to him. No good thing shall he withhold from you. You get it all. But you can't receive it if you don't know how to receive it. And if you don't have yourself set in a posture to be able to receive what he has for you, you're going to miss it. And you have nobody to blame but yourself. And so we have to learn to trust God and do good. Stop worrying about things that we can't change. That's God's business. That's his world. He's going to deal with that because he wants to know that he can trust us. He wants to know that we can, we're going to trust him. Put it that way. He knows what our fickle minds will do, but will you trust him? The perfect God and the imperfect man. Will you trust him? And so I share it with the congregation. You know, I like to leave you with a scripture to, to help you get through the week. It is Friday, but it's Friday night. It's still the beginning of the year. A lot of folks still on, on party mode. And so I left them with several scriptures. I don't want to read them all because I, I'll be late at the time. But I'm going to give you these scriptures. And I challenge you to go and read each one of them because they all support the idea that if you want to have it all, you got to let it go. So letting go to have it all is what God has for his people. And he wants us to know and declare everything that we've ever desired in this 2019. It is already yours. It's been settled at, at the cross. But the timing that it takes for you to receive it, the manifestation of it all, that's going to be contingent on what it is God is desiring of you, what God is desiring of me. Amen. It's on us. But we can do this thing. And we can do it as a family. We in this thing together. The harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. God wants us to know his word so that we can go out there and make it our business to help others so that they can get it. Okay, verse, uh, scripture number one. Again, I'm not going to read. I want you all to read it. Philippians chapter three, verses 12 through 14. That's Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And if you want to come back and say something uh, once we're done about the scriptures that you read or let me know you read them, that would really bless my soul because it is not for me to tell you or anybody to tell you anything. The word of God says, study to show thyself approved. When you read this word, that's what my mother would do. She would... Talk to me about the word of God, but then she had me read it when I got of age. Because once I had read it, I became accountable. When you know better, you supposed to watch y'all do better. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 9. James chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. James chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 25 through 27. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 25 through 27. And I'm going to give you also my uh, Hebrews we already had. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 19. That's Isaiah chapter 43, Verses 18 through 19. Proverbs 28, chapter 13. Proverbs 28, chapter 13. Again, I challenge you. Well, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. I challenge you. Go back. Read these scriptures. These scriptures are going to help you to do something that maybe you've been struggling doing. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, 
You cannot move forward holding on to the past, holding on to things that God no longer even remembers, but you keeping yourself bound. You have yourself in bondage. You are in captivity because you won't let things go. And you're wondering why you are struggling in this thing called life. Yes, we're going to go through some things, but so many things we put on ourselves. If you want to have it all, you got to let it go. So let it go to have it all. And that's the title of this year, this message, letting it go to have it all. The mantra for running show evangelical ministries and overcomers, it is to let it go to have it all. And letting it go, what is that? Anything that keeps you from being able to give all of yourself to Christ, your pride, your ego, relationships, family matters, children matters, your children. If you give it over to God, he'll give you what you need. It's all in his word. If you dive into the word of God, when you're going through, I promise you, you're going to find in his word everything that you need to do what needs to be done for that person to be healed, saved, delivered, whatever the case may be. But you got to let let go the things that you're trying to do. Because our way, if it was going to work, some of the stuff we've gone through, we wouldn't have gone through it as long as we did. So let's now trust God. Give it over to him. Begin to read his word. See what he says about this thing. What would Jesus do? Jesus would tell you to study thyself, study to show thyself approved. Okay? Uh, because we have to be a workman. And the only way we're going to be workmen is if we know the word of God. When we get a job, they have uh, this thing, the employee handbook. That's so that you can know the rules and regulations. Amen? Okay. Well, the rules and regulations are in the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before leave. Sorry about that. If we're going to get what we need from God's word, then no better time than right now to give it all over to the Lord. So I trust that you'll go to these scriptures. And again, I, I, I just have to believe that those that watch me here, that you're already saved. But again, I can't take anything for granted. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior in the part of your heart, no better time than the present to accept him, to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, receiving and accepting that he died on that old rugged cross, but on the third day he rose again. Amen. And he sits at the right hand of God, the father as an advocate. I love it as an advocate on our behalf to help us to be able to know and understand the ways of righteousness because our righteousness is as filthy rags. But when we seek to know everything that God has for us, it's a beautiful thing. It's an absolute beautiful thing. So God desires of us to get everything that he has. He didn't say, I want you to just get this piece or that piece. He wants us to have it all. And the only way to have it all is to let this other stuff go, to accept him as Lord and Savior, to begin to read and understand the precepts and the principles, the rules, the regulations, the code of conduct for living for Jesus. Because it all belongs to us. We have been adopted in. We have been adopted into the, the heavens, into this kingdom. And God wants us to have it. He said it's his desire that we all would be saved. So our job, all of us, every last one of us have been called to minister in one way or the other. Don't let no devil in hell hold you back in this 2019. Let it be on. Let this be the moment in time that you declare and decree you're going to do some things differently according to God's word for your life. You're not struggling because God don't love you or he's punishing. He doesn't punish you. He doesn't not love you. He loves you because if he didn't, he wouldn't allow Jesus to go to that cross on our behalf. So everything has been written. It's been settled in the heavens. And because it's been settled in the heavens, the only person standing between it is you and me. So if you don't know Jesus, let this be the moment in time that you give yourself over to the Lord. And for those that are already saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister. Continue to come together. Pray for one another. We're in this battle together. 
at least we're supposed to be united in this battle together. But too often we're fighting one another. Too often we are stirring up strife. Too often we're bringing up the past, trying to bring, make somebody feel bad when they don't even realize that the very thing that God allowed that person to go through was the very thing that God was going to use to bring them out. The very thing that God was going to use to make them who he has made them. And so we can't get caught up on what man has to say or what man thinks. Because this is God's business. We are God's business. And as long as we allow ourselves to maintain as God's business, then we're going to forever be able to overcome this world. What's the scripture text? Y'all know this by now. 1 John 5 and 5. Who is he that overcomes this world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe? I believe. And because I believe, I know that there's nothing that I cannot overcome. I know that there is nothing that he will with no good thing, according to his word, that he will withhold from me. Yes, life will happen. But because when I get, when I let it go to have it all, I get healing, a bomb in Gilead. I get deliverance. I get, I mean, he sustains me. He provides for me. He keeps me. And times I never thought I would have been able to get out of. His grace has been sufficient. And it continues to be. He loves us all the exact same way. There ain't no favorites here. Because we're in this fight together. And if we don't come together like the world, I mean, Satan, all of his little people, they have a gathering place. And they come together and they do what they do. But the tragedy of all of that is they good with where they are. And they, they help and do better things sometimes than the Krishnas do. The ones that's supposed to be doing stuff. So that's why we can't get deterred about what's going on or what they're doing. We have to always stand upright. Trust in God in all things, because eventually they're going to remember what we brought to the table. They're going to remember that no matter what they saw us going through, we always stayed focused on what God had to say. We never got down. We never got to the place where we cussed out one another or we did the things that when, 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 the, the, when Satan tested uh, Job, God said, go ahead. So first of all, he had to give permission. But God said, go ahead. He said, but you, you, you have him covered. You protected him. He said, okay, I'll take it now. I'm paraphrasing y'all. Hey, he, he, he loosened up the barriers. He said, go ahead. Do whatever you want to do, but you can't kill him. If God has no respect to person, you can't be killed either. So my friends, be encouraged. March into this year with a lifestyle change, not a resolution, not holding on to stuff that you can't change. Let it go to have it all, to be the best that God has called you to be. Don't try to step over into nobody else's place. Stay in your lane. We are called the body of Christ for a reason. We all have a place. You can't do what I do. I can't do what you do. But when we bring it all together, we are a phenomenal work of God. So let's start out together. And on that note, I want to thank you all. You all, all have been so kind to run and shout evangelical ministries and overcomers. You allowed us to bless our families in such an amazing way this year. Well, last year, uh, our pantry, you allowed us to keep it stocked by your giving, uh, keeping our children with the school materials from the time, because we give them stuff all through the end of the school year, not just at the beginning. We've been able to keep them taken care of. We were able to take care of our families through the holidays, Christmas. Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, all of these things because you have given unto this ministry. Thank you for it, for your kindness towards your giving in this ministry. And I, I, I just ask that you continue if you can. Uh, if you need a receipt or anything from me, you can inbox me uh, if you weren't able to get it uh, because we're grateful because we can't do it all on our own. God did not intend us to do it on do it on our own. We're supposed to be united in Christ. We're supposed to be united in the things that we're doing. 
So we appreciate you, and you can go on to our website. I've posted some things on the Facebook page, on our uh, Run and Shout page, and you can see some of the things that your donations have helped us to do, and we are very grateful, but it's Run and Shout. Ministries, the number one dot org. You could go in and you could see the great things that God is allowing us to do. And uh, we, we're grateful because we can't do it without you. We are a young ministry, uh, but we're going into our fifth year and we're so excited about that. And we know that this is God's call to ministry because there are things that God has allowed us to do that there's just no way in the world we could have done it if it wasn't for Jesus. So we thank God for Jesus and we thank God that you all have been touched to help us to do what we do. As you know, some of you know, I have we have ministry not just in Bowie, Maryland, but here in North Carolina. And the governor has me doing the same thing that we do in Maryland here. And so we are grateful for that. And we're looking to do even bigger and better and more and more and more in this year and the upcoming years. So to God be the glory for the great things he's done. Continue to stand fast, to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God has a plan for you. And no matter what your circumstances and your situations are, there is no one that God has made exempt from things that are going to go on in the world. So it's going to happen to you, but you're going to overcome. That's the difference between a Satan sinner. But likewise, there are things that you can overcome if you let it go to have it all. God bless you.